Hi guys, and today I've got for you the all new, brand new, second generation MG ZS. Maybe I think it would be a 2025 model, really, because um, we're coming out at the end of 2024, aren't we? So this is an ZS Hybrid Plus. This is the Trophy Edition. There's a Trophy and there's an SE. Now the Trophy is the top spec one. It's probably the one to go to. It's the one that they say actually is the most popular. And you can see why, because even for the SE, prices start at quite reasonable, £21,995. So undercuts most of the uh, BSUV segment uh, rivals uh, uh, that compare to it. Uh, the Trophy is about two and a half more. So it's £24,495. So it's well worth it. Together, they're about £1,100 more than the outgoing car. Um, you may be wondering MG ZS Hybrid so what about the EV version well they're introducing the ZS Hybrid first Hybrid Plus I should say next year there'll be a petrol only dedicated version and then the ZS EV the current shape is actually still currently available they've got some stock they've discounted it they reckon it will last into quarter one of next year by which time they will they will uh, announce an all new dedicated replacement for the ZS EV which will be on a dedicated EV platform based off the MG4 it'll have a different name but effectively that will be the replacement for the MG ZS EV. This one now goes to hybrid and then later to petrol. So as you can see, better looking car I think than the ZS although the ZS aged quite well but this I think is sleeker it's got the new family look about it so it's got the wide angle grille and uh, that is inspired by the MG3 and the MG HS that was recently uh, launched and that I reviewed prominent rising shoulder there on the back and this one like I said uh, 1.5 liter petrol hybrid so 196 brake horsepower 465 newton meters of torque 0 to 62 in 8.7 seconds by the way I'll put all this information on the screen I'm at a car launch and launch a media launch in the UK of this car. I'm here at Bista Heritage, so I'll put all the detailed information on the screen. 54.4 miles per gallon, 115 grams per kilometer emissions, which apparently is 30% less than before. Uh, it has a hybrid three speed transmission, um, so that's uh, interesting. Uh, three level regen as well, three driving modes, adaptive cruise control. The car itself is slightly longer a little bit wider and certainly a bit taller than the outgoing car um, lots of kit on this thing lots of things to talk about so as usual first of all we'll look at the boot space we'll look at the interior room we'll look at the front the gadgets and everything and then of course we'll take it for a drive a brown car guy. Right, so let's look at the boot space in this car. It's a manual uh, lid, so the boot lid, so that's not too bad. And down here, you've got a fair amount of space, and actually that's 443 litres of space, which they actually admit is 5 litres less than before because they've had to accommodate the hybrid uh, battery that's taken up some of the space. Although in here, you can see that there's quite a deep, what would have been a, a wheel well, the actual battery, the regular battery is there, and then there's a little compartment there. Uh, plus of course the triangle and with this floor you could actually put it down and give yourself a bit more room actually so that's even a little bit more deeper for some taller stuff like that split folding seats and in fact if you put the seats down whilst we've lost five liters of space in the normal uh, luggage space it expands to 104 1457 liters of space which is actually an increase of 82 liters over the old car right let's try the rear luggage compartment, rear passenger compartment. Are we luggage? <laughs> right, here we are. I'm trying to get the grass off my shoes there. And here we are inside the MG ZS Hybrid Plus. Now, this compact SUV segment, I would say, right? Um, I have just driven this from there to here. So this seat is actually set for me, six foot two with long legs. And as you can see, that's not too bad because this is squashy. And even without that, I do still have a little bit of knee room. I couldn't go a long distance because down here, that's a little bit tight, but certainly for around town and stuff like that, that's quite comfortable for me. I think I could handle it. And certainly for four, regular size adults or a regular size adult sitting behind a regular size adult I think it would be fine so what have we got back here we've actually got two vents we've actually got a normal USB plug there as well which is unusual these days uh, Isofix Chelsea anchor points uh, leather like upholstery there is no armrest in here and uh, deep door pockets and that's pretty much it there's no uh, sunroof in this but uh, on the other hand it's got the white roof so that's quite or the right interior roof so that quite helps and actually the, the glass area is quite good so it actually feels quite airy and spacious in here how does it feel in the front let's find out
Right. Here we are inside the front of the MG ZS 2025. I'm calling it 2025 uh, Hybrid Plus. Now, as you can see, lots of blank screens here. So let's first of all, let's turn it on. So the starter button, as you can see, is down here. Starter button is here. There's a gear lever. That's quite a cool looking thing, isn't it? A proper grab handle. I do like grab handles, right? So foot on the brake. Let's start it up. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That's pretty fancy. I like that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is quite neat, actually. That's a really nice screen as well. And you can see my reflection in it, but if I can move that a little bit, maybe you can see a bit more of it. That's also quite nice. Notice they have got buttons here now. Um, let's get some climate in here because um, you should be able to, yeah, 19 degrees. AC's come on. Okay, let's warm it up to 20, uh, 21 and turn the fan speed down because otherwise you might not be able to hear me. You notice the engine came on there. I just heard that, just slightest vibration. Now in here, that screen that you're looking at, that's a 12.3 uh, inch uh, infotainment screen. As you can see, they have put buttons down here to make it easy to navigate uh, and stuff like that. And then over here, you have got uh, a seven inch instrument cluster, which obviously shows you the car and all the information that you need, including uh, the range, how long you, all the trip computer stuff is there as well. On the steering column itself, You've now got remote controls as well. Well, you already had them, but here they've actually configured them. They've got the configurable ones here, star and star. So this one actually is for the region. Oh no, this one is for the, uh, this one's for the AC. So with the AC, you can see, hang on. So uh, there should be a way. Okay, so that I'm getting confused here. Or, or maybe it's this one. Ah, okay. So this one, you see this. So this button here can now so you can actually, and, and the temperature, so if I push it up and down, I can actually, so, so this button here, so now this is interesting, so this button here, on the steering, you can actually control the climate control. So without actually moving your hand to there, you can do it from here. So that's that button, so, if that's that, so that should have been on that side, but anyway, that's there. So what does this one do? So if I turn that off and then I press that one, oh, I see. So if you can see there, you can see a number there and that is giving you the region. So three levels of region. So let's start with that in normal. Uh, the modes are down here. So if I press that, you've got sport and you've got eco. So that's, uh, so we're going to start with normal mode. And then the rest of the buttons are there. What else have we got on here? So you've got oh, all of these uh, 360 degree cameras. So it's got standard 360 and standard sat nav, high definition 360 with radar and, you you know, cross traffic alert and all the rest of it. Adaptive cruise controls, of course, uh, settings there, configurable vehicle, um, auto hold and all that. So if you want, oh, auto hold is quite nice. Why isn't that, why isn't that on? Uh, energy regeneration. So that's the three settings and stuff like that. Uh, navigation, blind vehicle, bind vehicle. Oh, I see that must be for, what is that for? That towing, is it? Oh, it's for, I see, it's for your app, so you can have an app as well, and then that will obviously then link it to the app. So if I do that, and that will go, that takes me back to the home screen. There's your volume. Down here, you've got a power supply, then you've got USB-C there, you've got a tray there, you've got cup holders down here. And then over here, you've got another reasonable size uh, cubby bin as well. And... Um, Seating and door, that's not quite nice. It's kind of brush sort of look about it. Deep uh, compartment there. Look at this, this is like a, oh, it's a little tray. So if I push that up there, it's like a little tray. You could put pens and things in there. Uh, and then you've got glove box, decent size as well. So quite nice. This is quite nice. I like this arrangement. The vents look quite good, don't they? But this looks fantastic. I love the uh, instrument display, that's for sure. Cool, let's take it for a drive. Hey, are you liking this video? Then make sure that you hit the like button. That's really important. Also, tell everybody. Right, okay. So let's uh, go for a little drive. We're getting out of uh, Bister Heritage and then we've got a road route. So um, let's just get out of here. So first impressions, uh, the steering wheel, I would like to be able to adjust it for reach and I can't, I can adjust it for rake, but not for reach. I'd like it to, to be a little bit closer to me. And in fact, I'm gonna have to just move my seat back a little bit more forward and move the seat a bit more forward, um, just to give me that more comfortable reach. I like to be able to, you know, keep that like that sort of thing. But other than that, that's quite comfortable. Good visibility. The instrument panel I really do like on here. Right, so let's um, get ourselves 
out of Vista and onto some nice roads and then I'll catch up with you at that point. See, the good thing about Vista is that as soon as you leave the venue, um, you're out into some pretty good roads. And already, you know, like actually the mid-range punch on this, the engine is very unobtrusive. You can hear it, you can just hear it come in there. Um, I've got it on full regen at the moment, so you can, you can, you can detect lift off braking a little bit, but it's not extreme. It's not like you have to readjust for it. Um, and in fact, if I go back to one level one, yeah, level one is kind of coasting, level two, you can feel the resistance and by level three, yeah, there's definite braking going on. But it's not like, you know, it's not something that you have to uh, take too much time to adjust to. I think it will be fairly intuitive. But um, so far, so good. Um, light, easy controls, good all-round visibility. Um, personally, my body shape, I'm still struggling a little bit in this seat because I keep moving the seat back, forward and back, trying to get the right position for myself to be uh, in, a, in a comfortable uh, ratio to the steering wheel. Um, the seating height and stuff is fine. Visibility all around is, is very good. So far, it's been very refined. Now, you can see here where every time I lift off, now I'm in traffic and the regen uh, starts to make itself uh, felt a little bit more um, because it starts to slow down a bit more than I'm anticipating. So I have to keep coming on and off the accelerator. So I can actually just remove the, just by using the star button, put it back to one and they, uh, now it feels much more intuitive. So. Um, so far so good, um, encountered a bit of traffic now, so let's see how we get on a bit later on. Oh, look at this, what a great place, Burton Dassett's Hills. I'm gonna make a note to come back here again. Fantastic, great photo locations and uh, nice little roads as well. Oh, the engine is definitely, oh, oh, interesting there. So at, what was that, about four and a half thousand RPM I seem to get another surge of acceleration there. That was interesting. Very cool. So I'm in sports mode now. I still got the regen on. And you can see that every time I lift off, I get quite a bit of uh, braking assistance. But that's good. It's kind of what I want. And uh, you do get, look at that, a bit of wheel spin. That makes you smile. So I had it on the motorway earlier and I was using the cruise control, the active cruise control as well. I think it like really likes to keep its distance, but it worked pretty well. A um, little bit of wind buffeting, a little bit of road noise, um, not, not anything severe, just it, it's, it's there, that's all. About what you'd expect for a car this size, but generally pretty good. And uh, so far so good. I think I'm, I've had to adjust the headrest to finally get a bit comfortable in this. Because otherwise I felt like I was being, look at that. You can actually really chuck this thing around. It's surprisingly entertaining to chuck around, uh, which is um, surely not really what uh, a, a compact family SUV is supposed to be about, right? But uh, hey-ho, I ain't gonna complain. So um, getting some nice speed through this corner, able to put the power down. The engine is coming on. So it's got all these various modes. Obviously it's got hybrid, series hybrid. So what it does, it can choose a combination. It's on automatic, so it'll just decide what it wants to do. But um, it chooses a combination between, I guess around town, mostly driving as an EV and using the engine to just uh, charge up the battery and do it that way. And then it's got, uh, when you're, I guess when you're in sports like now, it's probably running the engine directly connected to the wheels and then using that. And then I think it's got a parallel mode as well, wherein it's doing a combination of both. And I guess that's for mixed sort of driving. But I guess when you're trying to do this sort of thing, I'm guessing that it's probably um, leaning more heavily on the engine. I can actually check. I think I can check from, if I scroll through, it's got power mode. So it, yeah, I mean, I can see the battery. I can see the motor. I can see they I seem to be working in parallel from what I can tell. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely like when you floor it, then yeah you can see that that's happening definitely it's uh you, around these corners a little bit i mean you know fairly stable fairly confident um and like i said you can actually chuck it around quite a bit a little bit of understeer if you really really push it hard but generally quite stable body roll is not too bad you know for something of this type where you would expect it to be a little bit roly-poly but it's actually fine and um you know the performance of, like i said the initial off the line performance is quite good and then there's that mid-range punch that you somehow get which is quite interesting and quite astonishing um 
but other than that not no real complaints at all the ride has actually been quite smooth on the motor it was quite serene quite good and even on these little roads here um it's actually not bad at all considering that you know i think it's got uh i'll, I'll put a correction on the screen if i get this wrong but 19 new 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 design actually 19 inch uh rims on it again just like yeah just the slightest hint of uh running but actually you know you can actually adjust it it's not like supremely adjustable but you can yeah, not bad at all actually. It's not a sports car, don't get me wrong, but it equips itself reasonably well. Into a corner, power, pretty stable, doesn't do anything wild or leery, but actually reasonably enjoyable as well I would say. Actually the roads, you know, if it's a good, if it's a half decent car on good roads and we're on some good roads now, then you're going to enjoy it, right? And uh, I'm certainly enjoying this. Yeah, it's about four and a half thousand RPM is when, you know, you get that initial acceleration and then you kind of get another surge at four and a half thousand RPM. Very slippery surface here, but still, you know, holding on fine, not an issue. Yeah, actually turn in was pretty solid there, not a problem at all. We encountered a bit of rain now on some very small and slippery roads. And, um, Wow, <laughs> wipers are doing well. Car still seems to be gripping the road fine. And in terms of the brakes, not bad. They do need a hard stab, get that ABS working, that's for sure. But uh, reassuring nonetheless. I was just seeing miles per gallon. I've not done too badly. Um, despite how hard I'm driving it, I'm still on like 42.8 miles per gallon. Oh. Not bad, you know, and again, a nice bit, little bit of a, a kind of a yump there, not so much a jump, but a yump. So despite the, uh, the weather, <laughs> and despite being in, uh, you know, what is less than 200 horsepower, family SUV uh, I'm really quite enjoying this little drive so that's a, a tick for the new MG ZS that it's able to be practical affordable but also reasonably entertaining so there you go I mean uh, comfortable practical affordable and reasonably well equipped family SUV I've been trying the stereo as well it's okay not bad either and um, connectivity you got apps and everything all the rest of it you can do that um, so overall not bad I think the, the the appeal of the ZS remains but now it's got more updated it's got more modern and I think it looks a little bit better and fits in line with the uh, with the current family there you go that's my review of it let me know what you think of the new MG ZS hybrid plus in the comments below and I'll catch you all <laughs> bear wheel spin there in the next video why am I stuck behind this Volkswagen? Shout out time guys, thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps, it really does.